I am Shane. I'm Kelsey, and, and this is Dixie, Dixie and, and we're, we're Love Hut for Life. We've been on the road now for 40 weeks in our homemade sliding camper. As you can see, our house is not on the truck right now. If you want to see how we did that, be sure and check out last week's video. But this week, we decided to take you to some of our favorite places in Alabama that we knew the hut just couldn't make it to. We saw three of the local covered bridges as well as our favorite swimming hole so make sure you like subscribe and comment below and follow us along this week and all of our previous and future weeks to come enjoy guys on saturday we left the hut behind grabbed us some boiled peanuts and headed for blount county alabama We couldn't go to Blount County without stopping by Witt's Produce. The owner Aaron is a friend of ours and his family is deep within the roots of this region. They've been farming this area for generations and I've been picking strawberries on their farm since I can remember. Next was our first stop on our covered bridge tour. Easily Covered Bridge, established in 1927 and still fully functioning. Easily Bridge was added to the Alabama Register of Landmarks and Heritage in 1976 and has been in continuous use, all but for a small restoration project since then. Easley is actually just one of the three covered bridges in Blount County. So it was just a short drive until we made it to the next one. In 1970, Horton Mill Covered Bridge was the first covered bridge in the southeastern United States to be added to the National Register of Historic Places. At 70 feet long, it is the highest covered bridge above any U.S. waterway. As if the bridge by itself isn't cool enough, there's a beautiful little hiking trail right to the side of it that allows you to get a better view and get down to the river. And that brings us to our first hidden swimming hole. You know, we have to be a little creative out here in the boondocks as to where we go swimming. There's not a lot of public pools. I like this region because we get a lot of rain and because of that, we have a lot of vegetation. It kind of looks like Middle Earth down here, don't you think? We resisted the very strong urge to jump in because we still had one more covered bridge to get to today and also our all-time favorite swimming hole. Before hitting any more covered bridges and swimming holes, I had to refuel and we stopped by Jack's, one of my favorite Alabama establishments. It started as a burger chain in the 60s in downtown Birmingham and has grown to 181 establishments across the southern region.
Our third and final covered bridge of the day is Swan Covered Bridge, built in 1933 and currently the longest existing historic covered bridge in Alabama and the second longest in the state overall. This 324 foot bridge has been fully functional since its first creation, except for a three year span between 2009 and 2012, where it was closed for repairs after a motor vehicle accident. Thankfully, it is up and running now and uh, hopefully will be for many years to come. Bridge number three happens to be our favorite out of this trio, mostly because the short walk or drive if you got the right truck down a dirt road and you're right on the riverside where you can either swim or kayak if the water's high enough. both absolutely ecstatic to finally reach the water that we had been excited about all day long. We spent the rest of the evening just hanging out and enjoying each other's company as we splashed around in the water under our third covered bridge for the day. Something absolutely magical happens at sunset in places like this. Swarms of mosquitoes come in and this big hairy dude rolls out. This trail is a narrow one. It's all sand bottom because it's a floodplain, but that doesn't slow down these trees and plants from trying to eat it every year. just a short hike back to our truck and then a short drive back to our house. I don't think I'll ever get used to saying that. It won't be long though. The next morning we had some projects to do. We started out by working on our hillbilly yeti and then had to head into town to pick up some supplies. Birmingham is uh, about 45 minutes from us depending on traffic, but that's the closest Home Depot there is. It wasn't long before we were headed back into the trees to pick up on some projects that our initial intent was to do before we ever left the state in the Love Hut. Due to time constraints and uh, our epic failure with the jacks, we never got to actually seal the bottom of the Love Hut. So this entire time, it's been unsealed. It's been holding up okay, but it was more than time to take care of that problem. This thing sealed in white rubber makes it look store-bought. It's kind of fancy now, huh? I don't know about that, but it definitely looks better and is unquestionably more functional. After that, it was time to work on the Hillbilly Yeti for just a little bit longer and finish out our day by toasting our hard work.
The next day, it was back to sling and fence for myself, while Kelsey surprised me by going down to my grandmother's and frying gator amongst any other vegetables she could get her hands on. That trend continued throughout the week. I found small projects to do around the house while Shane went and uh, dug as many fences as he could. Some of the perks of this job are its location and the fact that I get home in time to eat dinner and spend time with my family. next day at work was a short one and that meant that he was home in time for us to get into our storage trailer getting things that both of us thought that we could live without that we just couldn't this also gave us a chance to start work on a new sign for the love hut we used this sign hanging on the back to answer people's question of who we are and what we are doing as we travel around the country. The old one just was not holding up to the climate change and the extreme sun of the desert. It also gave us a chance to pick up work on the Hillbilly Yeti right before we packed up and headed down to spend the evening with my grandmother. The next morning, I employed Shane's mom to help me get the letters on this board because I am far, far from an artist. She did a great job and knocked it out in no time so that I could start attempting to burn it in. I got this far before the tip broke off in our new wood burner and it was no longer functional. So me and Dixie spent the rest of the day like this, waiting on Shane to get home with a new wood burner so that we could continue our project. And that one broke too. Thanks Harbor Freight. You really know how to let a boy down. I've really got to stop depending on this company. Friday it was finally time to waterproof the Hillbilly Yeti and we are super excited to see how this goes. It was already holding ice better than uh, an actual Yeti and uh, with all of these improvements hopefully we'll be able to add at least two or three more days to it. And I finished just in time for the afternoon storm. That rain cleared out just in time for us to close out our week watching the sun go down on Meemaw's porch. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as we did. And I'm grateful I got to share part of something that I call home with each and every one of you. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you thought about it. Guys, as you can see, uh, we have a different type of camping equipment in front of us, which means we're up for a different type of adventure this week. We're gonna hit up three different state parks. So be sure and stay tuned and check in with us next week. And I would like to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for following along this far and everyone that joins us on the adventure. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can keep up with us each and every Saturday. Yeah, guys, we appreciate each and every one of you. Peace out. See you next week. Bye, y'all.